Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to examine a royal clusterfuck that's happening between uh, Marvel and or Disney and the creators of some of their biggest characters. And this comes on the heels of uh, basically... This is, this is very similar to the Friday the 13th lawsuit and the Hellraiser lawsuit and the uh, Terminator lawsuit that are all currently going on right now. Um, and basically what has happened is, is the estates of these various comic creators, uh, this includes Stan Lee, Gene Colan, and Steve Didko, um, are all uh, filing termination lawsuits against Marvel regarding these various characters using uh, this bylaw that they are allowed to use after a certain period of time. Um, now, if this is successful, keep in mind also, Marvel is countersuing all of these people. So there's five lawsuits currently going through right now in various court systems in uh, California and I'm assuming other areas, depending on where these estates are located. Um, and those suits, um, those copyright suits are uh, basically Marvel trying to retain the rights to these characters so that they can continue to use them and milk money off of them. Um, now, here's the, there's, there, there's a lot to unpack in this, but I'm going to go over some of the familiar things that we know. Now, basically, Steve Didko's estate were, were the first ones that came around, and that was about, I think it was about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. Um, they came out with a statement that they were going to, it's coming to the forefront now, but apparently it was a few weeks ago that it was actually filed, um, but they came out with a termination clause that they wanted to terminate the uh, current rights to Spider-Man so that they could then have them returned to their estate. Um, and of course the current rights to Spider-Man are split between Sony Pictures and Disney slash Marvel, depending on which rights you're talking about. Um, and here, so, uh, in addition to that, there have also been other ones, again, St uh, Stan Lee and Gene Colan, and that includes various characters, including Iron Man, Doctor Strange, uh, various and various other members of the Avengers. Um, so here's, uh, so here's the lowdown on this, basically, is that, uh, the Didco estate has hired a uh, has hired a lawyer to come and represent them. Now that lawyer's name is Mike Toberoff, or uh, Mark Toberoff, and Mark Toberoff um, also uh, support uh, represented the creators of Superman in a very similar lawsuit, and he also represented the estate of Jack Kirby. Now the Superman lawsuit. Um, DC was able to reacquire the rights to him through a countersuit. Um, however, in the Jack Kirby case, it was ruled that Kirby was creating these characters as a work for hire, and therefore they belonged to Marvel. Um, now, th there's weird precedents on this, and in a lot of cases, uh, the publishing company, or more specifically, in this case, Marvel Comics, um, would normally win this lawsuit based on the fact that uh, it was a work for hire, and that's how they used to screw a lot of these comic book creators out of a lot of the residuals from their characters, and it's why a lot of current day comic provi comics don't always do that. Um, they still retain the rights to the character, but there's usually some kind of a uh, some kind of a, a clause in there that makes it so that some of those people will get some amount of money from characters that they created going into various things. Now that it's also been the case too that those various creators have been screwed out of that money um, because uh, DC and Marvel are scuzz bags. But it's uh, but. Regardless of that, Toberoff has experience in this. The other person who's representing Marvel Comics in that in a similar case is uh, Dan Petroselli, um, and he was also the one who represented DC Comics in the Superman lawsuit. So these two have faced off in court before, which means they probably know a lot of each other's tricks. Um, now, like I said, Toberoff is going is representing the, the Didco estate. I don't know who is representing uh, Gene Colan's estate and Stan Lee's estate. Um, but Didco is being represented by uh, Toberoff. And it, it's going to be interesting moving forward to see how this all pans out. Now, as far as I'm aware, this does not prevent um, Marvel or Sony or any of the companies that currently have the rights to these characters from continuing on with them until a court ruling is issued. Um, and at the earliest, the termination lawsuit would take effect in the year 2023. So that is the soonest that you could see that suit actually take place. Now, I'm going to explore two hypotheticals in this. 
Um, one hypothetical is if the creators were to win, and the other hypothetical is if Marvel were to win. Now, let, let's go with probably what, unfortunately, is the more likely scenario, is that Marvel um, is going to win the lawsuit. Now, the if, you're, if we're going by that, what's probably going to wind up happening is that the judge will wind up ruling that, yes, these are in, were indeed works for hire, these belong to the Marvel Comics Company and all, all, all rights therein, and any rights that have been sold off, again, belong to the people that have, they have been sold off to. Open, shut case, nothing, nothing changes. And Marvel keeps going on and burying these characters into the ground over time. Um, now... <laughs> If we go the other way, things get far more interesting because here's the other thing, too, is that all of these lawsuits appear to be going on at the exact same time. Um, now, as far as I'm aware, there are five different lawsuits. These are not lawsuits that are that are uh, I don't think this is like a class action or something like that. This isn't like a joint lawsuit between all these people. They just all decided to file at a similar time because of the time frame, I would assume. And... Uh, I don't know if that's technically a joint case. So the, the 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 only other thing though is that whatever one of these cases is ruled first is most likely going to be taken as a baseline for the ones that are ruled after it because they're in such close proximity to one another. Um, and the fact that I'm fairly certain Marvel is being represented by uh, the uh, Petrelli, um, they're their their lawyer. Um, and I'm not sure. Again, I, I only know that he is he is uh, representing them in the specific one of Steve Didko's estate. I don't know if he's representing them with Stan Lee and Gene Colan as well. Um, but it's going to be weird um, if they actually do manage to go through with it. Because because here's what's going to wind up happening is that the rights will then if again if all of these are are given to the point where uh, the judge rules that, yes, the rights are to be returned to the various estates. These were works for hire, but these people uh, created these characters and various other things. Now, the other thing that makes this a bit different, too, is that uh, in the case of, like, Friday the 13th or uh, Terminator, both of those scripts were written, again, as works for hire, but they weren't. there wasn't, like, an actual physical creation. They, they wrote the script. So they wrote the story in general. Um, but in the case of Steve Didko, he wrote the story and he also drew... Well, I shouldn't say necessarily... I, I can't remember if he actually wrote all of the stories. I know he did, he did a lot of the outlines and stuff like that. But he also drew and created the character. You know, he drew Peter Parker. He drew Doctor Strange. He created those characters, the way they look, the way they function. You know, he, that was all him, even though it was technically under Marvel's uh, umbrella at the time. So that might be a bit more interesting because now you have a visual representation of the character. It's not just something that's written down on a script where it's a name and a, and a set of dialogue. Um, it's different. So I don't know if that is going to give them more weight in this scenario. But here's the other thing, too, is that if they do, uh, if the, the estates do get the rights back, Marvel is going to immediately file appeals and this thing is going to be locked in court for years. Now, that is both a good and a bad thing. Because if it is locked in court for years, I mean, that's that's bad for the, the estates of Steve Didko and, and Stan Lee and, and, and Gene Colan because they're going to be paying the lawyers. And if they don't win that, then they're basically going to come out of that with nothing um, except for, you know, a year long, a years long battle with with Marvel and, uh, and Disney. Um, but if you the, the, the problem is, is that if, if they actually do. Uh, manage to get through and they actually beat the appeals process, Disney will then have to pay them royalties in order to use those characters. It's not like... Disney would have to reacquire the rights uh, either in a limited or permanent fashion in order to get those characters back in their movies and back in their various other forms of media. Um... And that would be hilarious to see Disney have to write all those checks because those would be very, very, very large checks that are probably well overdue for a lot of those estates. Um, so 
I would very much like to see that because, again, it would kind of give Disney a bit more of their uh, comeuppance, which they do deserve at this point. Um, but at, at the same time, that is many, many years down the road. And as long as those things are in deliberation, like let's say that they – let's say the judge, uh, the various judges in these cases, they file that the creators do indeed own the right – or the uh, creator estates do indeed own the rights and the termination clauses go through. If that is the case – and Marvel, again, files its appeals like we would expect them to do, then that means that those rights are still technically owned. Until that appeals process is over, those rights are still technically owned by those estates, which means Marvel can't touch them. So whatever point in time uh, those that, that is resolved is when something can be done with that property, which could be years. Again, Friday the 13th is going through this exact same thing where um, screenwriter Victor Miller who wrote the original screenplay for Sean, well, along with Sean Cunningham, filed for those rights, got the rights back, but then uh, Sean Cunningham filed an appeal in court and it went back into court. So you you had now a whole other situation where nobody can do anything with Friday the 13th because of the lawsuit. Um, and it's because they, they had to enter into the appeals process. But there, there's a lot of layers to this. I am not a lawyer. I do not claim to be a lawyer. I know a little bit of stuff involving law, but not a lot. Um, and I don't necessarily know what Marvel can and can't do while these various court cases are going on. I'd be curious to see what actually they, they can and can't do but in a legal sense. But um, I want to know what your opinion is. Do you hope the estates win? Do you hope that Disney wins? Do you I, I hope you don't hope the Disney wins, but whatever. Um, but, you know. What would you like to see come out of this? Uh, you know, put your thoughts in the comments below as usual. I like to read them. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. Hit the like button. Subscribe. And remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?